Welcome to a Healing Peace Podcast. My name is Kimir Baker. I am an overcomer, writer, speaker, and God enthusiast. I am fueled by helping women achieve their emotional healing so that they can live the abundant life God has for them. In this podcast series, we provide faith-based inspiration to men from emotional hurt, along with tools and tips for emotional wellness. In your journey, as you apply these tools and tips, you will begin to live the transformed life that you always desire. In fact, you will possess a new you. Nice to have you. I am so excited to what is about to happen next. I had the privilege to join the Keisha Simone radio show on DFWI radio. Yes, we talked about a lot and I want to share it with you. I talked more about my journey because at a healing peace, we're embracing healing to receive our peace. As you listen to my journey, it may seem just a little too easy, but I want you to know my journey has expanded for decades. It has taken time for me to get to this place where I'm able to inspire and encourage you on your healing journeys. So as you listen, keep that in mind, but also listen for tools and tips that will inspire you as you continue your journey. Welcome to my first Saturday show. I step up, I go up, 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 Grady, yeah! Now, before we continue, before I start making any announcements, I want y'all to see this beautiful face that is in front of me, Miss Camille Baker! Yes! Let me turn that around, turn that around, y'all see? Tell them, well, I just said your name, but you can tell them your name again and the name of your organization. I am Camille Baker, and I am representing a healing piece. Yes, and we're going to hear all about that in just a second, right? Mm-hmm. We got some stuff to talk about. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So you guys, as y'all always know, I always start with motivation. I always start with G-O-D because he is the head of my L-I-F-E. So you guys, thank you so much for just being patient. Today is Saturday, and we are glad to be in your ear if you're watching me in your face because this is my first Saturday show. Yes. 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 My boss man, boss lady, open up the gate again in such a short period of time. And I have to thank God, first of all, for allowing me this platform. I've grown in such a short period of time. T. Jones, you and Miss Jones have just schooled me, mm-hmm. got on me, <laughs> shown me the way. And I have to say thank you. I have to say thank you because sometimes people get above themselves and think it was all about them. Mm. But everybody has somebody that pulls them up yep. and, and leads them along the way. And I'm not a person of ego or pride to where I can't say that person helped me. Thank you. You know, I've been in the entertainment business 20 years, January oh, 10th. That's long. Yes, a long time. Start mm. off as an artist. You know, first thing was modeling, then went to various other things. But the success of my career mm-hmm was this radio. All right. The last thing that I ever thought I'd be doing. (laughs) And before we get into our inspiration song, we want to first of all, thank God for everything that he's done for us and allowing us to see this day. We thank him for just allowing us to get through the week. It wasn't the easiest, but we made it. We made it. You know what I'm saying? And before we continue, I have a couple of announcements to make, but y'all know I always like to step back and just acknowledge everybody. So Miss Kamir, how was your week? It was full. It was full? It went by quick. But I'm excited to be here. <laughs> That's good. I had a moment to sleep in yesterday. Oh, to nice. chill out, relax, take care of myself. That's something nice. we talk about is wellness. Oh, yes. Yes, we definitely going to talk about that. Yep. So yes. I, I did that, and it was wonderful. I needed it. <laughs> My body was like, stop it. Chill I know, out. right? So I chilled and out. that body will shut you down. Yes, it will. Okay. So I enjoyed my nap. Nice. Yes, you guys. What's up? Welcome back. Welcome back to the show, you guys. I'm your host of Southern Bell Radio, DFWIRadio.com, Miss Keisha Simone. And I have an amazing guest that we're getting ready to start her interview. And we're so excited because, you guys, we have a lot of questions to ask and we have a lot of information to learn. So without further ado, I want to reintroduce the one and only Miss Camille Baker. 
Yes, 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 you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show again, Miss Baker. I appreciate you stopping through, giving us this time, this knowledge, this education, because a lot of people fail to realize that, um, and we'll just get right into it, that domestic violence is more than just one form. Sure. So before we get started, can you um, kind of give us a backstory of what it is that you're representing? Well, I am representing long-term transformation. Love it. Yes. We've all, I feel like, have experienced some type of emotional hurt. It mm -hmm. may have been as high as domestic violence, and it may just be just dealing with everyday relationships. Right. And so what we try to do is focus on how do we have healthy habits or healthy understanding of our emotions that so it doesn't destroy us. Right. And how to expose those things that we normally stuff Right, and decide right. that, oh, I ain't going to deal with this right now. I'm just mm -hmm. going to do me. Mm -hmm. And I think for women, we do that so much because there's a lot going on in the world, especially with us being parents, being mm -hmm. mothers, being workers, being wives, um, careers, all those things. It's so easy for us to deny ourselves right. and say, we'll deal with this later. Sure. And so for me, I did come from an abusive background, okay. uh, physically abusive and everything else you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And it was from a caregiver. That's usually what happens. You, they bring mm -hmm. you in the home and you're like, oh, I'm gonna trust you. Uh, no. And the outcome wow. of that is, you know, it's amazing what abuse does internally. Right. And again, because mentally as well, and because of not trying to address those issues right away, mm -hmm. you go and you right. live and right. you live you and you live, you live right. And, but then at some point it's going to have a fall. It's going to come out. And I experienced that in my twenties. I just felt like I just lost my mind. Right. And it was because I never dealt with the things that happened to me. I never took oh. time to say, Kimari, what happened to you wasn't right. Right. And it's something that you don't have to keep holding on to. Oh, and like so that. I went through a period where God was like, no, it's time to deal with what happened. Gotcha. And in that was my healing journey. And okay. it came in different forms, different shapes. God brought different people to me, different went to therapy and I mm -hmm. did all of those things. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? I'm not the only one. How right. can I give back? How can my story help heal and encourage people? Right. And again, emotional healing doesn't have to come from domestic violence. It sure. doesn't have to come from the big things right right and so what we do as a nonprofit organization we've been starting off small we were trying to say hey Makes you know sense. what we're human right we got issues right i have a tendency i want to talk to you today i'm shutting down <laughs> i don't want to deal with you today and we have right. our self-doubt and even That's as true. women worthiness yes. we don't know that we're worthy yeah we don't know our worth yeah and so we put ourselves in relationships that's more toxic mm -hmm. that's more destructive just to be in one exactly and because by nature we were designed to be loved yeah and that's what we want yes and we try to find it in crazy ways yeah and it's not something that god wants for us yes and so for me i'm a jesus lover i love my god already g-o-d yeah. all day yeah and one of the things that i've learned in my journey is because of the suffering it's so easy to blame god he's at fault for everything because if he was as big as he is, he wouldn't he should, let that happen. Exactly. To me. Right. And so we go through this period as well of not knowing that he's with us. And gotcha. so what we try to do is kind of bring that back to a safe place and allow us to be exposed to not necessarily what we heard the preacher say on Sunday mm -hmm. that kind of got a little convoluted. Right. But to go back to a simple place, starting with I was created in God's image. He loves me. He's always been with me. Now, right. what does that look like in my everyday life? Right. And so right. that's what we try to do. And gotcha. right now we're focused on our podcast series because. Oh, nice. Yes. Nice. Because, Congratulations. Yes. Because y'all don't know me. Right. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> right. And so the podcast is a great way to get my story out to allow other people to come in as well. Mm -hmm. Because like I said before, we interview life coaches, social workers, yes. therapists, and we try to take a deeper dive to healing those wounds. That's instead real. of stuffing it, instead mm -hmm. of denying it, 
say, okay, what can I do that won't kill me? Right, right. <laughs> now, it's funny that you say that because yeah. I'm going to go a little bit back okay. when you said in the statement because what you said was very interesting and it caught my eye on many different, and before we get to these questions, I have this question yeah. because you said your abuse was from a caregiver. Yes. When you say caregiver, can you elaborate? Um, it was someone in my home that was considered to be, because the person is still alive, so you don't want to Okay, we're not going to use names. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was a, a relationship that my mother had and, you know, came into Makes the sense. home and, you know, wanted to be the parent, but decided that they wanted to do other things. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I got you. And I know I have friends where it wasn't necessarily a family in that context, but family members or family friends. Right. And for me, I was very fortunate where... I didn't have to stay in that environment long term. Eventually, the person did leave. Gotcha. And gotcha. so I was very fortunate, blessing. yes, that I didn't have to go back through and have to be reminded every day. So, mm -hmm. again, even though it was suffering and destructive, mm -hmm. uh, God still provided a light. Right. Now, when you're going through this and you're in the midst of it, and I'm not trying to take you mm -hmm. back to that place, but some people do not understand that they are in that place. Because some people think that is a natural thing. You know, this person doing this, well, this is their way of showing that they love me. Yeah, yeah, I had that moment. How did you cope with that in the midst of going through it before you got out? Yeah, well, I would say in the middle of it, I was confused because you you define what... Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. How old were you? Uh, Seven. Oh, you were a baby. Yeah, I was seven. Yep. Okay, so that makes sense. Yeah, and so you you try to rationalize and you try to make sense of it, of course, mm -hmm. and then you put in this category of, well, uh, this is what love is, mm, because that's because that's, that's what you think, yeah, that's, that's what, what you're getting, that's what so the, that's what you feel like yeah. you. Ah, oh, yeah. got it, yeah. got it. Got it. Seven years old. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. It's seven. That's, that's a this, child yeah. yeah, it's like they're programming you to say yeah. this is what it should mm -hmm. be. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And so it takes time to realize. And it, and I think what's key is having safe people in your environment that you can go to and talk to to kind of unravel that way of I'm thinking. I'm sorry. Pull your mic a little bit closer. Okay. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, uh, yes, it, one of the things that we talk about a lot in the nonprofit is having support and finding safe people yes. and being able to talk to someone who is professional who can help work through those emotions emotions, those feelings, and that understanding to kind of correct that way of thinking. Right. So that you don't come to my place in my 20s where you have a complete emotional breakdown. Mm, okay, so that's my next question. Yeah. When did you get to, because you said that you weren't in it long. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that I even know now that been in it and they are complacent with it. You get what I'm saying to where they're coming up to where it's like an embarrassment to say. How did you end up saying, okay, let me speak on this? Well, ironically, I've always been some type of creative person. Yes, I can see that. Yes. <laughs> and uh, for me, it came out in my creativity. I was in school and I wrote an article. I wrote a school paper. Oh, nice. And uh, my teacher was like, hold up. You're too young to be talking about this. What's going on? And so that's how it was wow. exposed for me. Okay. And, okay. and one of the things that we do talk about in the podcast series is the importance of being able to journal. And to be able to process your emotions and feelings and to be able to get more in tune with it in a safe place, gotcha. in a safe way. Gotcha. And then within that journaling and you're able to identify what's really going on, then you're able to talk to people and, and make sense. Right. It's not all jumbled. Right. Yeah. And so Makes for sense. me, my artistic side brought it out. And I know other individuals who will do painting or, right. you know, spoken like word. music, because that's what I did. Right. Music. music, things of that nature that kind okay. of, you, you know, frees that up a little bit. Okay. Now, you made a comment and it was very deep and I oh, respect okay. you and I commend you for that because most people could give two craps about that person. Mm. You still were trying to protect that person. Mm. And that's something that in a situation to where they've hurt you or they've wounded you to yeah. where you've carried that your life. Yeah. I, I salute you. I yeah. just want to say that because most people don't care. You've wounded me and I'm still trying to protect you. Well, I, I don't necessarily look at it as protecting, but being okay. respectful. Makes sense. Makes sense. Right. And even with that, yeah. you didn't respect my, so right. why would I respect you is what I'm saying. Like some yeah. people don't care and I, I commend you for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people, when they're going through that or what they've been through that, or mm -hmm. they may not know that they're in it right now. Sure. 
it's it's like a I don't want to think about it. Well, you're getting me at the end of it. Okay. Right? Gotcha. You're getting me at the end. Oh, of- I get what you're saying where yeah. I'm at now. I ain't yeah. always been there. <laughs> you're, you're getting me after the emotional breakdown. You're getting me gotcha. after having therapy and being able to work through forgiveness. Okay, so that was my next question. Yes. Was there a therapist? Of was there this? And was there any suicidal thoughts? Of course. And again, going back to when you endure trauma, it stays in your body. Mm. And there's other things that happen that trigger you know, it could be a sound, it could be a smell. And for me, I'm a music person. So there's certain music I can't listen to this day because it will trigger back to, yeah, that place. to that experience. Gotcha. Yeah. And so for me, again, I started this journey of healing later in life. But uh, my first round of therapy, I started in my 30s. Okay. And in that, I mean, we just went through it all. We went through the trauma that was endured. We went through, hey, you know, this is not your fault. And we went through not giving that trauma more power. Okay. And sometimes when we're not dealing with that trauma, when we're not addressing it, we're giving it more power because we're saying that you own this part of my life. And so doing Mm. that therapy work, we talked about, hey, come here. Uh, He ain't here. But you're living like he's right next to you. So what does it look like to live your own life? So how do you, and what process was given to you to live your own life? Because a lot of times it's in your mind. Of course, because again, I talked about it being trauma is in your body. Right, right. right. And so uh, there, for me, because of my relationship with God is the way that it is, that was my first step. And that is, he has the ability to transform circumstances. Okay. He has the ability to calm your spirit. He has the ability to put peace in your life that you thought you never could have. Okay. And, and that was my first step was he cares for me and even learning tools of how to think about God right here. Mm-hmm. And I remember having one session where she had me close my eyes and she called me, baby, come here. And, we, right. and she was like, come here, think about being in God's hand and he is embracing you. He's holding you. He's patting your hair. He's telling you how incredible you are, how loved you are. Think of that as your safe place. Mm-hmm. And and she, and I did that. And she was like, "Come here. I don't know if you realized, but while you was doing that, you were smiling." <laughs> That's good. That's <laughs> right? good. Because because for me, I had to come up with a way to make God tangible. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. And some people may, you know, do beaches, long walks, you know, nature. Right. Again, painting some form of artistic. But for me, it was a visualization. It was similar to meditation okay. where it was okay. like, hey, um, I need something bigger than myself right now. Mm-hmm. What does that look like? Mm-hmm. And being able to have scriptures and repeat them over his promises, mm-hmm. you know, and repeat, you know, I'm wonderful and created right. and repeat that, you know, I gave up my son for you and repeat that wow. I am loved and cherished and repeat that I've given you something more in the, you know, not in this world, but something far greater than what you've experienced. Okay. And repeating, hey, you've gone through things so that you can encourage other people through their walk. Got it. And sometimes we don't think of that part. Yeah. Because we're consumed with the hurt. Yeah. Because it's yeah. like, why me? Right. And for me, it was like, hey, no, mm-mm. it don't have to end right here. Right. Right. You know, th- it doesn't have to be the rest of my life. And I'll also say too, again, we talk about having a support system. My mom was incredible with instilling, like, you can do whatever you want. That's good. Yeah. That's good. And I've been very fortunate to have a mother who was that in tune with, girl, do not allow society to tell you who you can be. Okay. And so I had those positive messages as well, saying you can do more, you can be more, don't give up. Now, what would you tell someone, because everybody doesn't have that mother mm-hmm. and everybody doesn't necessarily, I won't say believe in God, but everybody doesn't serve him and they don't know him. Mm-hmm. What would you tell that person that's like, doesn't have that life? Because in California, I met quite a few. I would I'm just sure. put it out there. Sure. And the thing about it is their escape goat was something like drugs, right. drinking, right. Uh, sleeping around. Right. You know what I mean? Because I have certain friends that even sure. now to this day, they cover it up by using something that sure. they feel numbs the pain. Sure. Even though it's a moment help. Yeah. But the lifetime scars are something that how do you deal with 
someone like that that's not right. fortunate to have what you're blessed with. Right. And and I think you've already answered that question, which is you're doing things to create more lifelong scars. Right. You talked about I'm going to these things that are temporary comfort, mm -hmm. but in that temporary comfort is causing me more pain. Right. But what I'm saying is someone like you that helps and that's been through yeah. that, yeah. how would you help that person? And that's my first step, <clears throat> which is to allow the person to see that the way that you're coping right. is causing more destruction. Okay. The way that you understand what makes sense to you is actually destroying you. Okay. So okay. let's start taking little steps with um, unraveling that behavior and finding different things that can bring you comfort. Okay. And okay. one of the things that in our podcast series that we're doing right now that's been out this week, uh, we talk about overcoming fears and we talk about, again, finding something that's safe that mm -hmm. you can start meditating on and fusing in your body. Right. And right. so it could be, hey, let me start with yoga. True. True. Let me start with exercising. True. Let me start with something small that could be helpful mm -hmm. to my just even physical emotional well-being okay so that will be the first start which okay. is identifying hey really you know that's actually destroying you do you mm. want to live another 20 years and then that form of destruction right 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 and so then after you identify that then you start interweaving some of god promises in there because for okay. me again I, I go back to long-term transformation Okay. And I've tried to do it on my own. Like, I'm going to just work at it. I have these tools. I'm going to go through a therapist. She gave me these tools. I'm just going to do it. Right. And it'll get you so far, but it won't carry you long term. Yeah, because when you're saying it, and, and not to get too detailed about it, not yeah. to get too detailed, and anything I ask, you can definitely not oh, answer. Sure. Yeah. You know, put that disclosure out there. Because you're saying it in a simplicity form. I'm trying to. You've just heard the first half of an incredible interview. Please come back next week to hear more of my interview with Keisha Simone. Well, let me correct myself. Keisha Simone's interview with me. And while you guys are on your app, please leave us a rating. Give us four to five stars and leave us a review. We love your feedback. The more you give us feedback, the more people we're able to reach. See you next time.